If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Those are great words spoken from the philosopher, the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. But let's be honest, that really does apply to life and the same thing applies to business as well. So in this video, we're gonna to touch on each of the areas to consider when we're thinking of business financial strategy. So let's get to it. So the first thing that we wanna understand when we're thinking of financial strategy is balancing goals. And we wanna be able to balance them between business and personal. Because oftentimes when we start a business, we're doing it for personal reasons. Maybe it's because, hey, I wanna replace my job and I don't wanna work for anybody else. Or maybe it's because, hey, I wanna grow this thing so big that I become wealthy, I become a millionaire or a decamillionaire. Well, if it's because you wanted to replace your job, then you probably don't wanna be working in the business all the time. And if you wanted to actually scale, you're probably gonna need the right people in place. So with those two being some of your personal reasons, then some of the business goals could be hiring a CEO in three years. Because at the end of the day, the business is gonna have its own culture, its own, its own drive. But if you're trying to choose which direction it's going and you're not aligning it with you, who you authentically are and what you personally want, you're going to run into a lot of those times or, or points of contention where you're like, man, I don't know if I want to do this or I'm only doing this for this goal over here and now I'm feeling drained which is not something that you wanna feel as an entrepreneur, although you probably will feel it at some point in your career, just to, just to let you know. And speaking of CEOs, you can check out the video in the description below about why you need to hire executives, but be sure to check that out after this video. Okay, the second thing we wanna consider is financing alternatives. Oftentimes, beginning entrepreneurs will think the only way to bring in money into the company is by producing more sales through products and services. But every now and then, a company is gonna need a cash injection outside of what we can produce in sales. And there are several other financing options that we can look into, such as business loans, SBA loan, maybe a business line of credit, or we can actually sell equity in the company to raise some capital. However, now that we have all of these options, we want to be able to objectively compare these to make sure we know the pros and cons or the overall impact of choosing one over the other. Now, the third aspect is managing costs. Now, this is what most small business owners think of when they think of managing their finances and increasing their profits. They think, okay, how can I spend less and still run my business efficiently? So here's typically where the problem occurs with that sort of mindset is that we can only cut out so much. Let's use our personal lives, for example. So we need a place to sleep. We need food to eat. We're going to need car or transportation of some sort. We would love to have some sort of medical coverage of some sort. And when we start to look at all of the things we need, even if we really scrape to the bottom and use as much government assistance as we could, there's still a bare minimum that we need to be able to, to bring an income to afford some of those things. The same thing applies to the business. I mean, we're gonna have employees, we're gonna have software systems, we're gonna have CRMs, we're gonna have marketing or lead generation platforms. All of these things are gonna cost money. So although we may be able to negotiate for maybe lower prices or maybe find a service provider that's a little bit cheaper, there are still gonna be some costs that we just need to operate. And that's where managing costs comes into play. Because if we can just find a way to make sure that these costs are not that variable, most of them would be fixed costs, but even the variable costs, if we can predict within a range of how much we're gonna spend every month, well, now we can put a control feature on that spending. Now, here's a little pro tip. There's actually been thousands of studies about the psychology of money. And oftentimes, if we have money, we enjoy spending it. This goes off of the Parkinson's law. Essentially, if we have it, we will use it. And so understanding how to manage cost, and we can call it a budget for an example, understanding how to manage it will actually help us reserve more money or keep more of our money. Even though our revenue is increasing, we don't allow our expenses to increase as well. If you guys want a video about the psychology of money, please let me know in the comments below. I would be more than happy to make that for you. And by the way, if you're finding this valuable so far and you wanna to continue to support Mike, then go ahead and hit that like. Let's go on to the next one. So the fourth thing we wanna consider now is how do we manage our liquidity? Liquidity is our cash or cash equivalent things, things that we can turn into cash fairly quickly. And this is important because let's say that a ton of our equity or a ton of our value is tied up in illiquid assets such as real estate, right? Illiquid meaning it takes a very long time for us to produce the cash or to get the cash back. And then let's say all of a sudden, all of the mortgages are due on that property. Right? We have 30 days or 90 days to pay off the mortgages, otherwise we incur hefty penalties. In that situation, we're kind of screwed because yeah, we can put the, the properties on the market and we can try to sell them. That's not going to be an issue. 
But we all know that a good real estate transaction could last 45, 60, if we're talking commercial real estate, 90, 180 days before it closes and we actually get the paycheck. In addition to that, by us being liquid, it can help us support the daily operations as well. If we have cash reserves and all of a sudden there's a big market shift, we at least have the funds to continue to function so we can strive to get more, more sales and more clients. Two major times in recent history that you guys may remember where liquidity was one of the main issues. That was around the 2008-2009 era and around the recent pandemic. So this is a crucial point of operations that many people overlook or we don't discuss enough. The next area is taxes. So after we think of managing costs, oftentimes the entrepreneur then immediately goes to taxes. There's a narrative going around that as long as we can kind of manage our taxes, we can pay as little as possible and take advantage of all of the tax incentives, well then we can really start to scale our wealth and the overall performance of the business. And so although this is not necessarily not true, I think that's correct. There is some validity to this, all right? But we have to understand that this taxes is only one small fraction, one small section of the overall financial strategy. I like to call it the game of taxes because if we gamify it, it might make it more interesting. I tend to geek out about it. Not many others do, but hey, if I can keep more of the money that I earn, then why not study it? Why not learn about it, right? At least in my mind. And so the game is how do we pay as little as possible in taxes, but still show a strong company performance because that's gonna play into so many things, whether it's getting a loan or maybe even selling our company down the road, the stronger that we can show the performance, the more value that the company has. Now, after taxes, we're moving on to number six, which is financial risk. However, when we think about risk, it's not just those those metrics. There's a lot of risk in how we've set up our company legally as well. Some of the legal things that immediately come to mind when we think about exposure, it's any of our contracts with our clients or our tenants. So if we don't have some of those additional clauses for protection in those documents, what could happen is maybe a loophole is found and then all of a sudden the company is attacked and sued for X amount of dollars. But it's not just about the contracts or agreements between us, the company, and the client, we also have to consider any third-party vendor or contractor that we work with. And to go even deeper, we also have to worry about the employees that we hire and what those employee agreements look like. One key document that can really provide a lot more financial protection would be an insurance policy. Just like you'd have an insurance policy on your car or your home, you want one for your business that can protect you from a lot of these underlying risks. And another thing to consider with uh, financial risk would be the legality setup or the entity structuring, um, like an LLC, C Corp or S Corp. And so I'll also put in the description below about how an LLC could potentially save your business. Um, so go ahead and check out that video as well after this one. And number seven is one that many people don't mention, but is extremely important, which is succession planning. So think about it like this. What happens in the event where you are no longer able to work in the company or you just decide, hey, look, I'm done. I want to wipe my hands clean and I want to move on with my life. Now, you may have already premeditated about what you want to happen with the company in the long run. For example, let's say you started a company with the whole intent of selling the company. Well, that's great because from the beginning up until whenever that time comes, then everything that we've done in the company is to set it up to be sold. But what if you want to keep this company going on for generations? You want it to be a staple name, maybe like Walmart or uh, I don't know. Sprint. Okay, Sprint may have not have been a good one. Maybe uh, Apple or Mac, but you get my point, right? Maybe you want it to last for quite some time. Coca-Cola, that's a better one, or Ford. There you go, Ford's good. That one's lasted longer than most of the other ones I just mentioned. But if that's the case, then you wanna make sure that you have a succession plan set up. And so this could be um, who? Who are you giving ownership of the property to? Is it gonna be family? Is it gonna be business partners? Is it gonna be friends? Is it gonna be whatever? Another section of the succession planning can be how you would groom the new ownership or maybe the new CEO or whatever the case is. And what I mean by that is, okay, how long do you need to work with them? Maybe it's a two year plan. Maybe it's a six month plan. Okay, I wanna make sure that this individual understands these sections of the business, that they can operate with these parameters. Or maybe it's defining exactly what that board of directors may look like and what are some of their key inputs that they should have to offer and kind of writing that up before the board of directors ever starts. But you can see that this list or idea of things to consider can go on seemingly forever. So as entrepreneurs and business owners, it's extremely important that we continue to plan ahead and that we continue to learn consistently and constantly and 
all that forever, which you guys are doing already, obviously. And so in order for you to continue to do that, my recommendation is that you click one of those videos in the link below or choose one of the ones that YouTube recommends right over here. See you in the next video.